Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and this is the Frugal Sim News for today, Sunday, November the 15th, taking a break this week from any scenery coverage just to focus on some very cool developments directly related to stuff in the cockpit rather than outside. Hope that's okay. First up, Eagle's first ever DCS tournament. Now I mentioned this in last week's show, Eagle Dynamics are gearing up to host the first ever MiG vs Sabre dogfighting tournament and it looks awesome. The news this week though is that they've moved the date out to December. The competition will now take place on December the 20th, meaning we all, including me, have enough time to register in that competition. Perhaps more importantly of all though, was the reason for this date change. The reason is due to Eagle wanting to make sure that DCS World 2.0 and the Nevada map are both released first. Yep, there's now a rough date that's less rough than previous rough date ranges. DCS World 2 and the Nevada test range map will both be released within the next month hopefully. More info on the competition at the Eagle forums in the link in the show notes below. And yes, I am very much seriously thinking about entering. It just depends on my schedule and work and all that stuff. Next up, FlySimWare have released the Lear 35. Now, the Learjet 35 is a multi-role and pretty iconic business and military transport jet with a range of over 2,700 miles. FlySimWare's version was modeled very closely off of the real aircraft's operational specs. It features very high quality internal and external models, including an advanced lighting system. Now that lighting system can eat virtual addressing space. So they've actually gone the extra mile here for those that experience out of memory errors to make a download available that is easier on the memory load if you regularly fly with highly detailed scenery. Good on you, fly somewhere. Um, it has a custom sound set from TSS, a full aircraft configuration panel, a service hangar to deal with failures and repairs, and completely accurate startup and shutdown procedures. Now, as is increasingly common, the aircraft supports integration with the Flight One GTN 750, but it also supports the Reality XP WX500 weather radar. If you get that, obviously that's an additional cost, then you get an incredibly accurate weather radar in the cockpit that does not require a specific weather add-on to use. The package comes with full documentation as well as both cargo and passenger variants and eight or nine, I think it's nine liveries and supports, get this, all versions of FSX and all versions of prepared. So one, two and three for $41.99. More information at the Fly Simware link in the show notes below. Next up, FS Labs actually showed concrete progress on the Airbus. That's the video that you're watching right now. Now, I haven't covered the FS Labs Airbus before, as I actually have a policy on this channel of not covering companies that just drag out perpetual teasers for years about products that they hope to maybe release at some point, who knows when. Hence why there's been no Quality Wings 787 coverage until we get something firm from them. FS Labs this week, though, has released a video showcasing the Airbus and stated on their forums that the product has now entered its wider beta test. In fact, they are looking for online pilots to join that beta test. No idea how long the beta will actually run for, but at long last, FS Labs are now making noise that the end is in sight, which is great. In fact, the video, which you're watching, was produced with help from my good friend Ben Weston over at Airline to Sim, so the company obviously has no problem right now showing it off to a wider audience than they ever have before. In fact, Airline to Sim have even hint hinted that they're going to be releasing a full training video package just like they did for the Q400. In other news from FS Labs though, on their forums, the company also indicated that an update to Concord X would be with us in just a couple of weeks time. This update making that aircraft at long last work in prepared. Now, given how memory hungry, hungry Concord X is and how much improved prepared version three is at dealing with memory, this is all round great news. So looking forward to some wonderful new developments from FS Labs very, very soon. Finally, Aerosoft have shown more previews of their stunning Rotate MD-80 for X-Plane. Now I say more because apparently they've shown previews of this aircraft in the past, but this was actually the first time I've ever heard about it. I went and tracked down some more information on the aircraft and found it at rotatesim.com, the developers. And I gotta say now I'm really excited. Rotate MD-80 looks like it may well be a near study level version of the MD-80 for X-Plane. Now add this to the hopefully soon to release IXEG 737 and X-Plane is really starting to shape up as the sim to be in for classic airliners. The add-on will model ILS alignment, all nav modes, all cockpit procedures from cold and dark through to shutdown, the full MD-80 FMS, all autopilot modes, the pneumatic systems, the electrical systems, and seriously much, much more. You really do need to check out rotatesim.com for the full list of everything this aircraft's gonna have. It's pretty crazy. Um, the aircraft apparently is actually very nearly ready to go and has been developed with the help of two current MD-80 pilots. Now I have a handy MD-80 pilot nearby as well, so I cannot wait to see
see what he thinks of this release when it finally releases. So as I said, no scenery news this week, just because I wanted to take a break from it. And um, honestly, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. Hope that's okay. If I did miss anything of vital importance, though, do leave me a link in the show notes below. And until next time, my name is Frugal, and I'll see you all very, very soon.